Several friends of mine have become hooked on photography via their smartphones. As they become more ambitious, they realise that, good as it is, the phone camera limits what they can do. The inevitable next question is, what camera should I buy? I used to explain the terms DSLR, CSC, EVF, OVF, MFT and all that so that they can make their own informed choice. But it was pointless. Makers like Panasonic using password generators for model names don't help. But even so, the camera market is so vast and diverse that confusion is the only logical reaction. So I just used to say, buy a Panasonic G7 and a 14 to 140mm zoom. The G7 is a classic micro four thirds camera. It is without frills, but with a stabilized super zoom lacks nothing. Plus, the body comes in at just 449 pounds. Barely a year later, along comes the G80, G85 in the United States. Now I'm confused too. Is it a G7 upgrade or a G8 in all but name? Or does G80 mean a new camera? First look says it's a G8. The G7 and the 80 are hard to tell apart. The G80 is a few millimetres all round bigger and 25% heavier, though still slight by DSLR standards. But under the skin there's a lot different. Most important we have full five-way in-body stabilisation, a shock-free shutter mechanism and a weather and dust sealed body with a magnesium frame. It retains the 16 megapixel image of the G7 rather than going for the 20 megapixel sensor of its GX8 stablemate but improves IQ via the removal of the low-pass filter. All in all, I'd say the G80 qualifies as a different camera from the G7, so maybe that's the reason for the name change. In a way, it's a G7 with the interior spec of the GX80. In use, the G80 belies the physical similarities to the G7. It feels immediately more rigid and solid, less plastic, as of course it is. The shutter, what can I say? It is sweet and whispery to the point of being musical. Here it is with reference to the already dulcet GX80. It has improved body stabilisation from the GX80 according to Panasonic and also dual stabilisation with most Panasonic lenses. Look at how blurred the walkers are in this shot on London South Bank. That's handheld at one quarter second on the Panasonic 12-32mm zoom at 14mm. The stabilisation enables me to use the noise-free ISO 200 rather than the ISO 1600 for the minimum 30th of a second I'd normally want. I'm not a sharpness freak, so the removal of the low pass filter doesn't mean that much to me, but images do seem a little crisper, so why not? The EVF is big and bright, as good as they come, apart from the GX8's exceptional item. I find that often it is the little things that make me enjoy using a camera. On the G80, those little things are a cutout so that you can open the fully articulated screen without scrabbling around. Secondly, moving the SD card from the battery compartment to its own slot on the right side, making it so much easier to change cards when the camera is on a tripod. The plug for connecting to a computer is now, at long last, a standard mini USB, instead of that big thing on the G7, though you can't charge the battery via USB as you can the GX80. And it retains an integral flash, something that seems to be dying a slow death on Micro Four Thirds cameras. There's no flash sync socket, but it's very cheap to add one via the flash hot shoe. Another thing missing is a headphone out socket, but there's no fix for that. Finally, for video, the G80 now has full stabilisation in 4K mode. All in all, Panasonic have pulled off a neat trick by improving key performance aspects of the G7 without adding frills. So how do all these new goodies pan out in practice? The body stabilisation is excellent, certainly the best so far from Panasonic, and good enough to make using a shutter speed of a 60th of a second an everyday business, using the Olympus 40 to 150mm at 150mm. Given a recommended 1 600 for such a lens, that suggests between 3 and 4 full stops of stabilisation. With a 14 to 140 Panasonic super zoom fitted, and therefore combined lens and body stabilisation, 1 60th becomes a solidly reusable shutter speed at 140mm, with 1 30th less reliable but never less perfectly practical. I referred to the sweet sounding shutter before, but its real value is the elimination of shutter shock. The lens most prone to shutter shock was always, anecdotally at least, the 14 to 140 Panasonic zoom. Here are results from a selection of the most shutter shock prone speeds. Even at 100% they are identical. Shutter shock with a new magnetic shutter is a non-issue. 
But what is nice is that it is done without resort to any electronic means whatsoever, just eliminated at source. The focusing is up to Panasonic's usual standard. Single autofocus is seemingly instantaneous and will very rarely not find enough detail to lock onto, even in dim light. The G8's continuous autofocus follows and predicts a fast moving subject's position very well. This sequence is quite a difficult one. There is mist lowering the contrast, and the cyclist is at the bottom of a steep hill travelling towards, and then towards and at a changing angle, then away from the camera, doing between 12 and 20 miles an hour. I have similar results in the other 10 or more sequences I shot, but with an occasional really fast rider it works out at an average of 4% off focus. It's impossible to be scientific about this, because with the very fast riders it is difficult to keep them in frame as they get closer. But my findings here are same as for the GX8 and GX80, so look reliable. The frame rate I use is medium rather than high to retain a live view of the subject, and that has yielded a rate of about 5.5 to 6 frames per second here. Oh, and by the way, this is with the Olympus 40-150mm f2.8, set at 150mm wide open. So no Panasonic depth from defocus wizardry here, and precious little depth of field to mask any focus inaccuracy. I have set a custom AF mode for these types of action shots, which I find works very well. By the by, my Olympus 40-150mm gets such a lot of use, one of the great lenses of modern times. Usefully, the G80 has a focus stacking capability now. While I never saw much use for the post-focus facility on a camera with inherently great depth of field, now that I can use that facility for focus stacking, it makes much more sense, and it works very well. I make no secret of the fact that I review from a stills photographer's point of view, but the video on the G80 benefits greatly from the in-body stabilisation, whether with dual stabilisation from Panasonic lens or not. The dropping of the low-pass filter should add a bit more bite to the moving images, and there is software in the camera to remove any worry effects which might be encountered as a result. Plus, the focusing speed is well judged when using video, not so slow as to give fuzzy sequences, not so fast as to appear jerky. And, new to the G80, you can adjust how sensitive focusing is to subject movement, slow it down for video, speed it up for stills as a rule of thumb. Basically, unless you have highly specialist video requirements, the G80 will do everything you want. I just wish I had another lifetime to learn as much about video as I have about stills. But I don't, so where do I place the G80 overall in the Micro Four Third spectrum? That's pretty simple. It costs a lot more than the G7, but for that you're getting a whole raft of improvements. The biggest of which for me is the ease of mind of just using the mechanical shutter all the time. It goes up to a four thousandth of a second, it works with flash, it's quiet and smooth, and it eliminates shutter shock and jello effect concerns. Now, you can just use the electronic shutter for the specialist application it is good for, ultra high speeds and silent operation. Throw in Panasonic's most effective in-body and 5-axis stabilisation so far, dual stabilisation, weather sealing, and the solid feeling magnesium body, 4K video plus all the associated 4K stills modes the confidence-inspiring focusing, and the relatively low price. And what we have here is Panasonic's most complete Micro Four Thirds camera so far. But as I mentioned earlier, the little things mean a lot too. For example, the power save LVF mode. Set the monitors to the shooting info display, and you can have the camera go to sleep a few seconds after taking it from your eye. It could be annoying, but it comes back to life so quickly that it isn't. So you use it, and your battery really does last longer. The G80 is as workmanlike as the G7 was, but all round improved. Would I upgrade from a G7? Probably not. Selling a G7 and buying the G80 would likely cost you around £400, and that wouldn't be reflected in your pictures since the G7 is already so capable. But buying new, the extra cost is a very worthwhile investment. There is a battery grip available for its main competition, the Olympus EM5 Mark II, and now there is for the G80. So with that and the in-body stabilisation, Panasonic are parking their tanks on Olympus's lawn these days. I'd say that Olympus's EM5 in-body stabilisation is still a bit better, but the Panasonic's focusing is the better of the two, in very low light and continuous mode. With Panasonic's dual stabilisation, it matches the Olympus, though that relies on having a stabilised Panasonic lens. What surprised me most of all was the difference the new shutter made to my shooting experience. 
both in peace of mind from shutter shock and exquisite sound and smoothness. The G80 is quite a camera. Every change over its predecessor is beneficial and nothing is forfeited, except for the money, a fairly hefty price hike. I paid £449 for my G7 body and the G80 is £699. So for friends starting out on proper photography, I'll still recommend the G7 and the 14 to 140mm lens. But for anyone with experience or looking for a camera that will not limit them in any way, the G80 seems to be the best of breed right now. With its killer combination of effective in-body stabilisation, confidence-inspiring focusing, sweet shutter and weather sealing, it will be a hard act to follow. Certainly, if I had to choose one camera body only for all my photographic tasks, the G80 would be it. Thanks for watching.